Now, I think it's fair to say that one of the areas that we see constantly being worked on by Adobe in both Photoshop and in Lightroom is the ability to make selections way easier to the point that we can make some quite intricate selections with literally just one click. But if you're anything like me, you can tend to be just a little bit skeptical that when they do show these new bits of software, these enhancements, that the images they're going to be using them on they're bound to be ones that they've practiced on to make sure that, yes, we're going to get the best results, the most impressive results with this image. But what about using them on our own images? Do we still get the same great results that Adobe are claiming? Well, I've got five images here that I photographed just with my iPhone. And I want to show you the results that we're getting with this new cloud detailed results uh, when it comes to selection. So let's just dive over to my screen here. So first of all, then, this is a photograph I've got of some friends of ours, just sat on, on their motorbike in a location where we all went out to, to stay for a little while. Now, if I wanted to cut them out off the background here, I'm going to go, I'm going to press W on my keyboard to bring up the object selection tool. And in the top bar here, the options bar, at the top of the screen, we've got a whole load of different options to us all over here. Now, the area that I'm going to come to is where it says select subject just here because to the side of it, there is this drop down arrow. Now, when I open that up, I'm going to make sure that it says cloud detail results. This is where the image is going to be sent up to Adobe's cloud servers. The AI is going to look at it to see exactly what it's got and then send back a selection for us in the form of having marching ants. Actually, before I do that, let's take a look at what it would do without that. Let's take a look at what it would do ordinarily without using this new technology. So what I will do is I'll change it in here to just device for quicker results anyway, and then I'll click on select subject. Now, very quickly, we see the marching ants. I'll just press to get the v, uh, move tool so we can see these clearly. And we can see now that we've got the marching ant selection going around us. But what kind of result have we got? Well, all I'll do is just come to the layers panel in the bottom right hand corner here and just add a layer mask. And now we can see exactly what we've got. But look, when I zoom in straight away, I can see, look, we've still got some of the original background showing through the uh, the framework here of the wheel. And as I go around it, you can see that there's bits of the tire missing just there. And it doesn't look so good on his feet and the underside. It's all very rough. More of the original background showing through there and looking rough around here. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't look good on the helmet either. In fact, there's parts of the helmet missing there. So that's not the kind of result that I would want, but it is what we would have had before this technology, which is being improved more and more as time goes on. So let's just go to file and revert. And then what I'll do is I'll go back to that select subject, but here instead, I'll make sure that it says cloud detailed results. So that is definitely ticked. I'll then click on select subject to activate it. I'll no doubt get a little bit of a spinny wheel and then the actual processing will kicked in, kick in as it sends this up to the cloud servers to then look at it to say exactly what we've got and then send it back in the form of marching ant selection. So we'll just give this a second or two just to kind of go through that process and there we go. So now look, there we've got the marching ants and I'll do what I did before. I'll just click to add a layer mask to now see what we've got. And as I zoom in, <laughs> straight away, massive difference. Look, straight away, everything's gone from between the wheel, the uh, framework of the wheel just there. The tire's intact. You can see it all looking way better down the bottom. We've got none of the original background showing through the rear wheel. And let's have a look at the helmets. Yeah, they're exactly how I'd want them to be. Let's have a look at the layer mask. Looking pretty good. All right, so that that's obviously a way, way better improvement. But let's take a look at some other images here. I've got this tree. Now, ordinarily, before this technology was introduced, to select this tree, including all the branches and the trunk, I'd probably have to do this in two parts. I could maybe do a channel pull on the top part and then use a different technique to select the bottom part and then put the two together. But how does this cloud detailed results work on an image like this, where there's a lot to pick up? Well, let's take a look. So again, I'll go to the select subject, making sure in the drop down here that it's set to cloud. And then all I will do is just click on select subject. Again, I'll probably get that little bit of a spinny wheel going on as it starts to kick in. Sending this file up to the Adobe's cloud servers, which is what it's doing now. It's analyzing it. And then a few seconds later, it'll throw back in the form of 
a selection, which we can see now, marching ant selection, which looks good. In fact, it's also included the trunk, so it saved me some time there anyway. Let's add a layer mask to take a look. And yeah, I mean, look at that look. Just crazy. All those small detailed branches. This isn't some stock image. This is ones that I've taken myself, which makes for me even more impressive. Now, let's have a look at the layer mask that it's given us here. Let's have a quick look. And zooming in, there would be some areas to tidy up because this is not an easy thing to select. So we could use the old techniques here where we would use a brush with a white or a, or a black color in the overlay blend mode. And we can brush over those areas to make the white areas whiter and the black areas darker so that we get much more defined selection. But I mean, straight away, look, that's looking pretty impressive. Very, very impressive indeed. A lot of the heavy lifting is done very, very quickly. But let's push it a little bit further. This is an image here that I grabbed just a couple of days ago with my iPhone when we were out having a coffee, turned around, there was a kid who'd put his bike up on a stand, and grabbed a quick shot in the raw, uh, Pro Raw format. This is the image here. This would be a bit of a challenge to make a selection of, ordinarily, using all the manual methods, things that we've had over the years. This would be quite a challenge because of all these spokes. But let's take a look now at what it can do. So we'll go to the select subject, making sure again, I'll always check that the cloud detail results is the one that I've got and I'll click on select subject. Let's wait for that little spinny wheel there and then eventually it'll kick in as it is now where it's sending up to the Adobe servers. Just analyze it, see what it's got and then come back. And sure enough, there we go. So we can see there's lots of marching ants over it. The spokes, it's looking really promising. I'll add a layer mask. <laughs> and this is what we've got. So you can see all the spokes. We've got all the bits, a tiny bit here, which I could just get it, get rid of very easily. In fact, I'll just get a brush in the normal blend mode. And all I would do is just bring that in and just get rid of that. Nice and easy. But you can see, look, even all these little bits, individual bits in between all the spokes down here, look, absolutely incredible. All the little bits there it's picked up on by the actual valve, all the spokes. Wow, incredible. Let's have a quick look at the layer mass, see how good that is. Sure enough, I mean, that is seriously, seriously good. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so far, so good. Now, I'm going to go to this image here, but before I do, just want to mention something about using this tool. So you'll notice that when I go to the tool, I've mentioned about already in the options bar at the top of the screen where we have this option where it says device or cloud, where you can just manually choose between the two. You'll notice that mine has got, by default, look here, we've got a tick next to the cloud detail results because that's the one that I always want to use. So you can set a default one for you. The way you do that is go to the settings within Photoshop and you want to go to image processing. And in here where it says image processing, select subject and remove background. So both of those are going to be using the same technology and here is where you can choose which one will be by default. Cloud detail results is the one that I want. That's what it's got there. And click OK. So whenever now I use select subject or uh, remove background, it's going to use that technology. If I wanted to use the device method, all I would do is just come here and click on it, and then it would do it. But then once it's done it, it'll then reset, and it'll be back to the default. So every time you use it, if ever you change it, it'll then revert back to the default. But now let's have a look at what it'll do with this one here. So we know now that my default one is set to cloud. So I'm going to just leave it as it is and we'll click on select subject. Just give it a moment or two. We've got that spinny wheel. Eventually it'll kick in where it's now sending it up to the Adobe servers for the AI to analyze and see exactly what it's got. And then sure enough, seconds later, it sends it back and we get the marching ants, which is looks like so. We'll add a layer mask to see what we've got. And that's already looking impressive. In fact, look, if we zoom in, let me use my cursor controller just here. Look, I mean, all the individual cogs, I mean, that is impressive. All the little bits in between the cog wheel as well. And we can see, look, when I zoom out to now, look at all the spokes, everything. Absolutely everything is included. So we go, there's before and after, before and after. And let's take a look at that layer mask. I mean, pin sharp. That is seriously impressive. If there's any tidying up to do, which may be just a little bit up here where it's a little bit smudgy, very, very easy to do. Like I said, we could get that brush to sharpen this up here. 
I'll change the foreground to white and I'll change the blend mode in the upper left to overlay. So this white brush now and white areas is going to make anything that's not white, it's going to be like a, a shade of gray, it's going to brighten up like you can see just there. And the outside area, I'm going to swap it now to black. So now when I press down on black area, any area there that's not black, it's a shade of gray, it'll darken it down. So you can just use that technique there to really sharpen and tidy up your layer masks. But that's minimal work, absolutely minimal work when you think about what heavy lifting is done already. And the last one, I've got so many examples of this, but this one here I thought would be quite a good one. It's one that I took, again, with my iPhone. I've been out on a bike ride. This would definitely be a challenge because look at the spokes here. Look how close they are in tonal range to the ground behind them. That would not be an easy selection to make. It would take a long, long time, but let's just try it. So I'll go to the select subjects. But actually, first of all, look, let's take a look at what it would do without this technology, without it sending it up for the AI to take a look to then send it back to us. So let's have a look here. So I'll change it to device and then click select subject. It happens very, very quickly, and I'll add a layer mask. And this is, <laughs> this is what we've got. That would take quite a bit of time to clean up. In fact, I probably wouldn't even go with it. I'd probably do go to the pen tool or something to try and get it better. That's, that's going to take a lot of work to fix. So let's just revert that file and revert. And we will now choose the detail, the cloud detail results, which is in by default because I set it in that image processing menu. So let's have a look. We click on select subject. It does take a little bit longer. We see the spinny wheel. Eventually it then kicks in as it is now. Actually, that's going quite quick as it sends up to the servers and then it'll send it back to us. And let's be interested now to see exactly what we've got. There are a heck of a lot of marching ants going on. So let's have a look. Let's go down to the layer mask. <laughs> and that's very different to the one before it. Very, very different. I mean, that's just insane. It's not going to take much cleaning up if there are areas within that layer mask to do, but that's pretty impressive. Again, probably a bit of the overlay with the brush there, black and white to tidy those bits up. But, I mean, you've got to say, you know, sceptical or not, when you see these done on your own images, you can't help but be impressed. And even more so when you think that here we are currently recording this video in August 2025. A lot has happened just this year alone when it comes to this selections and how Adobe are, you know, using this cloud detailed results where it gets sent to the server and then comes back to us. Very exciting times when you think about how this is going to lead. Um, I love it. I love this kind of stuff because it's going to allow me to make selections and get on with the stuff that I want to do, the creative stuff. And I have more time to do that rather than spending time doing tedious kind of work. I don't want to be doing that. I want to be working on the creative stuff. Oh, and one extra thing. This isn't using your credits. That always is a question that comes up when you're using this. It isn't using any generative AI credits. It's just going to the server, coming back with a result for you. So, yeah, just wanted to share it because this is what I was kind of playing around with very recently, being very skeptical about, you know, new technology. And is it as good as what they're saying it is? My results are kind of saying, yeah. There will always be images that throw, you know, throw a little bit of a curveball in there but predominantly the ones I'm throwing at, and they're not exactly, you know, majorly detailed high-res images. These are ones that I've been taking with my phone, and it's still picking up all those intricate little details like those bike spokes and all the little bits in between. So, yeah, very impressive. I would encourage you to, to give it a go, have a play with it, and just see how you get on. This is in the regular version of Photoshop. If you didn't know, it's not in the beta version. We have this available to us in the regular uh, version. So go and have a play. See what results you get, and like me, get excited for what's to come, because uh, this is getting better and better. Now, before I go, just to let you know that you can now experience my masterclass community on school completely for free for seven days with no commitment. You'll have access to the community forum, the live call recordings, calendar of upcoming events, and access to courses, classes, guest expert talks, and a lot more. To join us on the seven day free trial, just use this link, which is also in the comments section below.